Welcome! In this video we're taking a deep dive into using envelopes. These little lines are a great way to animate your content and do so much more. First I'll explain you the, all the ins and outs of uh, envelopes in Resolume and after that we're going through a bunch of examples uh, showing off different ways you can use envelopes from BPM syncing to audio modulation to animation, all, this, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's get started. I have a, a just basic uh, basic solid source here and I want to apply an envelope to it. Uh, we'll apply an envelope to the to the red color. You can do this by clicking on the cogwheel and below click click on the envelope. Uh, right now there's a linear line. This is how all envelopes start. And it basically behaves like a normal slider. Now I can add extra points in by double clicking and creating curve, for example, something like this. And if I move the slider now, now all of a sudden the top point, uh, the, the max value is in the center. I can keep adding as much points as I want, create some kind of really funky curve. And to better show this, uh, I will create a timeline out of this. So again to the cogwheel and a timeline. And now you can see um, basically we have a sort of, uh, uh, we have an animation like we normally have, but we did I decide with this envelope uh, when it's going up and when it's going down. Now uh, you can remove points as well. Also again double double clicking them, remove the points. Um, and you can see a few numbers here in the bottom moving around. Uh, the face is basically uh, which part of the, the timeline it's at. So from zero and in the end is 100. As you can also see the start and end phase um, points cannot be changed, but that makes sense. Uh, so for example, if you want something to happen exactly at the center of your video, or uh, if you clip, you can just put in phase 50% and now it's that center. Uh, the second point you see, the second parameter here in the bottom is uh, the actual value of the, uh, the, the parameter you're animating. And then we cut here to curves. So the curves are really interesting. So once you click the, um, the menu here, it pops open and you have all these kinds of, well, it's, I think it's based on math. Um, and you can decide how it goes from point one to point two. Sign out, I think I learned this in high school once. Yes, so now we have sort of a bouncy thing going on. I like the bouncy ones. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And of course, you can just set it back to linear. Um, a really interesting one I want to show you, um, let's restore this, is um, the hold. Because hold will basically just draw a straight line. And this way you can create a stepped, um, a stepped envelope. So you can... Um, things in blocks we'll get we'll get uh, to more examples of uh, how, how how you can use these um, functions but hold is hold is pretty powerful let's clean it up again um what's next oh yes uh, um, presets we have presets uh, so in the bottom here you have the p button and there's um, uh, presets that we have made for you that you can use for example this this LFO, and of course you can uh, you can change that. There's some pretty useful stuff, especially the four to the floor kind of stuff. If you want to do um, beat matched um, stuff, we'll get to BPM syncing in a bit. Uh, but this is a uh, I, I often use this uh, this four to the floor uh, as a template to build on uh, my own uh, envelopes. If you've made a cool envelope that you want to use yourself, you can also save save your own envelope. So I could say uh, my awesome envelope and save it. And then um, it's in this menu. And of course you can also uh, go back and uh, delete it. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that's basically all you need to know right now about envelopes. Uh, so let's go into a few examples uh, showing uh, functionality. So uh, I call this a bounce example. Uh, what I wanted to show with this example is that even though you're using envelopes, the playback modes are still working. So here the uh, playback mode is set to bounce. 
and uh, the, the timeline of course bounces up and down but that also means the envelope bounces up and down and this is really handy if you want to create um, uh, if you have a complex envelope and you want it to repeat um, so yeah bounce uh, is still an option um, here we see the hold again here uh, random playback mode um, but I use the steps to divide basically the, the space where the it's, it's moving over the exposition and it's jumping around um, if you would have it completely random it would shatter all over the place but because I'm using the hold there's only three values that the random value can jump to because of the hold it draws a straight line up there is only three values and I map these values to be exactly uh, what is it minus 0.4 and then probably in the top plus 4 and in the center 0 so this also brings up another point make uh, when you're creating an envelope so not all values run from 0 to 100 or 0 to 1 uh, this is an exposition so it runs in both negative and positive space um, on the subject of randomness I want to show this example um, random maybe it's the rotation of the of this triangle is randomly animated but it's semi-random and I wanted to show this because sometimes you want random and sometimes you want to have controlled randomness uh, like in the previous example as well and this is I think this is a preset we actually have it's called the noise preset um, but of course it's it, it looks random but it is an envelope so you have more control over it let's have a look at uh, some BPM uh, examples um, really nice if you I uh, have here a linescape this is a basic source in Resolume and I have added uh, a BPM synced envelope uh, to the jagginess so basically how how yeah how jagged the lines are and as you can see it's 4 to the floor so it's, it's synchronized to the BPM also see here the, the, the beat the measure um, <coughs> the beats are shown here in the envelope as well so you can really be on point and it also uh, snaps to that line so you're always uh, in the right phase um, so yeah this is a great way to just on the beat uh, make stuff happen um, you also of course have the um, have FFT um, functionality in Resolume I prefer this because as you can see I have uh, three times a, a regular response to the kick and in the last one I made this little wiggle so it, 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 adds, it adds a variation to it and of course it's BPM sync so if I increase the BPM it's still in synchronized I have another BPM example um, basically I just copied the previous example we still have the, the curve over here and here I did exactly the opposite I started to create um, uh, effects offbeat so that's also a great way to use BPM sync because it allows you to create offbeat uh, variations to it and in uh, the next BPM example I'll, I'm going completely crazy with that um, but before that we have to check out this clip position example um, so what clip position does it's uh, first of what is clip position uh, clip position is an animation mode in which the animation uh, the time of the animation is bound to the position of the clip um, so here I wanted to have this this little little, little guy from our uh, lock and lol pa pack recently released and I wanted to bounce him up and down in the end so I figured out like what what's the scale uh, gonna be and I set limitations to that and I uh, drew a curve here an envelope and then I set the clip range to the end because if I would set it all the way to zero it would run through the entire envelope and if I set it halfway through ish then it only triggers halfway through the uh, through the clip so if it's all the way in the end it's gonna be a very glitchy almost uh, wiggle going on yes so the position uh, the start and the end can be set with the range also opposite can be true if you want it only in the center now it wiggles in the center Combining the previous one, the BPM example, and uh, the clip position example, you can get really, really cool video automation. Um, show you this clip for a while. There's a lot of lot happening here, as you see. This is also the biggest example I will have in this uh, in this tutorial, and we're gonna break it down completely. Uh, first, I'll deactivate all the effects, bypassing them, so you can see what's happening. Uh, just um, just without the effects. 
Uh, we have BPM sync on, so if the BPM uh, goes up, uh, this whole clip will stay in, in sync. Um, with anything about the sound, no, that's all fine. And we have the linescape here. Um, so the what to know uh, important to notice here that the clip is BPM synced, but that the envelopes are all set to clip comp composition. So because the clip is already BPM synced, the envelope will also be in sync, or the, or the, or the timeline will be also in sync. Uh, as you can also see, the the measurement is greatly increased. So we are now going from 4.4 to 8.4, um, 8 bits. This allows me to do basically video automation like you would do um, audio automation in, for example, Ableton or any other uh, DAW music production system. Um, here I use the hold, again a stepped envelope, to alter the direction on the beat. Um, so every time you hear like the, the, the rim shot sound, the, um, the whole thing rotates 45 degrees. And in the end I just let it flow out, I like that little change in the end. Um, the height, I basically just uh, listen to the beat and I put like a little increase, a little increase in the, um, in, the, in the line, it's the line height on every time you hear a kick or the big hit. There's basically the kick in the beat and there's also the, the big crash in the, in the beat. And I try to, to, to modulate around that a little bit with some variation to it. Again, also uh, settings, uh, clip, posi uh, clip position timelines. It's all clip position timelines here. Um, for a beat like this, it can be very hard to hear where exactly the kicks are. Uh, so what helps is actually in the sound and in the transport, uh, slow it down, and this this really helps me to hear where the, where the kicks are when I'm making envelopes like this. So it's a little little bonus tip you're getting here. Uh, then of course the jaggedness again. Uh, saw it in this previous example well as well. Um, I hooked it up to the the big the big hits you hear in the beat, and I think that's all for the linescape itself. So I'll close that. Um, first effects, shift RGB, I think this one has no envelope, no. This is just slowly moving up and down to give a little bit of variation uh, and not just have only white lines. So that's that. Then I have the sh oh, shift RGB, low res. Um, the low res and the shift glitch, I will open them at the same time and activate them as well. Um, so in, in the center of the beat there's this big whoop sound. And I wanted to do something special with that. So using a uh, hold, hold curves, basically the whole effect is doing nothing all the time. It's just zeroed. And then when the whoop comes up, it glitches out, uh, increasing the pixel size uh, dramatically and also uh, glitching out. Uh, here it's linked to the opacity. So basically the, uh, the effect is the whole, the whole time it's invisible. It's not, it has an opacity of zero and then it shoots up to 100 and uh, the effect becomes visible for that short amount of time. Um, I, yes, the, uh, oh yeah, so what I wanted to talk about this one is they are exact copies of each other and for this to, to achieve this copy I used the uh, preset. I actually drew out this one first, created the preset, yeah it's actually called, it's still there, it's called whoop, and then I copied it uh, and used the preset on the shift glitch as well. Moving down, uh, we have the twitch. And a twitch, basically same concept as uh, the low res and shift glitch. Just in the end, I wanted something special, so the, the whole beat is done, and I wanted to uh, create an effect for that. So uh, it's the twitch effect, and it uses the chaos preset, which is very dramatic. It basically messes up your entire screen, as you can see uh, here as well, um, to add some variation uh, in the beat. So that we turn that on, and then in the end, I think the mirror quad with Miraquad. I love Miraquad. Um, what I want to show here, the flip X button is animated. So you're not limited to sliders. Uh, you can actually um, 
animate buttons as well. So in this case, it's a switch. For example, in the particle effect, there's a manual mode. You can spawn particles manually. You could hook that up to an, uh, to an envelope as well. And you can also add it to a palette. Uh, and I'll show you that later on. Um, but yeah, basically this finishes my visual. I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It could be in a Kendrick Lamar video clip, I guess. Um, to, uh, onto something uh, less dramatic, but very useful. Here we have an uh, uh, example in which uh, we have this, this uh, footage and I want to move it around uh, and I'll, for that I use the, I have created, um, I have animated, no not animated, but I uh, added an envelope, so no, there's no timeline involved, involved this time, uh, to the anchor X and the anchor X is linked by dashboard to this knob over here, so now I can, I can use this to move around. That's not very special, you can do that without an envelope as well. Um, but what I wanted to show with this example is that you can uh, use, for example, in this case I use a sign in, sign out, to give me more control over the positioning in the center. Uh, because it basically the envelope becomes the response, cor uh, response curve of the knob. Uh, it's really hard to show this in the video example, but when I move my uh, MIDI controller around, I feel a difference in this. And another good application for this would be um, uh, audio channels in which you can create a custom volume uh, curve or um, a filter curve if you want. Yes. Um, moving on, here we have uh, another clip. What I wanted to show with this example is we have a bunch of um, envelopes that are very similar. It's on the um, shift RGB effect, so it, it, it takes the red, green, and blue channels and it shifts them around in space. I put it to zoom, so it basically zooms in and out, in and out, <coughs> excuse me. It basically zooms these channels in and out. And uh, the envelopes are very similar, as you can see, um, but they are very imperfect. So they are all slightly off from each other. And also the time. These are these are not uh, these are just regular timelines. Um, these these but the timelines are set to different times, as you can see. This is 10, 13, and 17 and a half seconds. And this way you can m use envelopes to more organically modulate footage over time, uh, because I think with these time sets the um, the envelopes will never be in sync. So if you're more into this organic, um, experimental kind of footage stuff, this could be a cool way to use it. Moving on, I already talked about audio automation. Well, this is basically what happens when you add an envelope uh, to a filter. Uh, here I used an envelope on my low pass filter of this audio clip, and you can see this basically as audio automation that you can also do in Resonant. It's a, it's a handy little trick. Uh, moving on, we have a palette. We have a cross source made with a shaper. Um, I just added a bounce out curve envelope to the rotation because it looks cool. Uh, there's no shape too. Uh, I wanted to talk about the color. As you can see, when you use a palette and an envelope, uh, you can see where the colors are um, on, the, on the envelope as well. And you can use this to shift through colors if you like. Last example, no, for, uh, not last example, almost last example, uh, the strobe example. Uh, here we have just a piece of uh, simple, a very simple beat and a curve turning on, the, on and off the opacity of uh, a white solid. Uh, just wanted to show you this is a great way to create uh, custom strobes. That's basically it. Yeah, there's not much to tell about it. It's just an idea I had. I'm like, okay, yeah, custom strokes. That's cool. Uh, for the last example, I'm going back to my bounce. And I'm going to my layer. This only works on layers. Uh, and unlock this and this. These are two effects. I have the fish eye and the ripples effect. Yes. And they're, um, they are set to... This is a relatively new feature in Resolum 7 to transition phase. I recently did a whole video on transition phases. Uh, and basically, uh, transition phases are, allow you to create custom uh, transitions between clips. So if I turn them off, I just fade between these clips. 
and now I turn them on and now I have this wiggly effect between them if I hide this you can probably see the curves as well so they only play once so the transition and it's it's of course hooked to this uh, to the transition time over here so now it becomes a very slow process but yeah uh, envelopes great way to create uh, transition phases conclusion of this video envelopes are really awesome and you should use them all the time and links to the footage packs that are used in this video you can find in the description and uh, yeah see you in the next one